It's not a long time ago since an M3 had 343 brake horsepower. That was the E46. This is the BMW i4 and it's got 340 brake horsepower, rear wheel drive, and it's electric. And if you want to buy one, starting from late 60s, you'll get your hands on one. If you want to get an M Sport, which this one is, it'll creep into the mid 70s. And then there's the M50 which is just one of the Irish car of the year. But actually, don't buy the M50, because this is all you need. It's absolutely fantastic. And we're gonna have a little look around it today. We'll go for a spin. I have owned so many BMWs in my own life. Personally, there's no other brand I've driven more cars with. So I really feel like if I can get into this and love it, there's no reason why you won't either. Welcome to Nobby on Cars, this is the BMW i4. So the front of it, classic BMW, depending on how you feel about those noses in this day and age. We've got wonderful bright LED daytime running lights, as you can see there, they catch the eye really well. Nice grooves and lines across the bonnet, again, making it classic BMW. Um, around the side, if I'm honest, those wheels could probably actually be a little bit bigger. They, they just, they'd add even more to the whole stance of the car. But they do look well. I, I like the design of the wheel. Maybe just if they were 20s. They're, they're 19s and um, they kind of just don't look maybe as big as they are. It's just probably the design of the, the wheel or whatever. And then if you go a little bit closer, you'll see we have uh, M Sport calipers in behind the wheel. Michelin Pilot Sport tyres. A um, little bit of airflow grooves and stuff going on down here. And from the side, it's just, you know, classic BMW. You've got the Hofmeister, you've got the, the sloping angle on the back. I mean, it is essentially a 4 Series Grand Coupe, a 3 Series, whatever way you want to look at it, just with a battery. Same goes for the rear then. Bright red tail lights. A little bit of grey that kind of breaks up the back of the car. And they really have gone for the vibe of, look, just make it look like a BMW and it's electric, but that's not necessarily obvious. On the back then, again, something else that would make you go, oh, it is electric, it's E-Drive 40. And on this side, then you have I-4. And that's it. It's electric, uh, operated tailgate here. Good size boot. Plenty of space to get things in. Not necessarily the widest boot in the world, but there's enough. Uh, you can house your cables, your Type 2 cable in here. And there's also a bit more uh, storage space and nets down here. And then if you go under here, if you have a Harman Kardon system, the sub is there, so you kind of lose space for cables. But that bag actually does work fine. And then this parcel shelf just remains closed at all times. And then this part up here, the same for the boot. So it means that your privacy is not compromised then if you have valuables in the boot. Again, keyless, so you have little grooves on the door handles here. They open nice and wide. If you are getting kids and objects in and out, plenty of room for them. Uh, leg room is fairly decent. I mean, there's not tons of it if you have your driver's seat reasonably far back. Uh, very much a kind of a, a two-person space in the back. You will fit three. Uh, this model also has your self-contained aircon, climate two USB-C charging points in the back also. So people are well catered. And the ambient lighting has loads of different colours that you can change and you can brighten it up and make it darker. And it's cool. They've got an all-out classic BMW in the front of the i4 also. Steering wheel directly from a 3 Series or a 4 leather feels great like you have to get into audi and the likes to get an electric car of this caliber with this kind of interior tesla just don't come anyway near this kind of interior and i know i know that's always you know people people probably go mad why is everything always compared to tesla i suppose just because they got there first and then all the kind of mainstream brands were probably just watching and seeing where they were going to take things but it's just when you look at the the kind of finish of the materials inside the car there's not a part of it where 
you say to yourself, oh, they've they've skimped on something to, to make the batteries work. You can obviously charge your timing for the morning time, have a nice toasty car when you're leaving. Pretty standard on a lot of electric vehicles. But again, if you're familiar with BMW interiors, like you'll, you'll just see that straight away and kind of say, yep, yeah, that looks like business as usual. Again, that ambient lighting on the inside of the car. Uh, loads of different colours. I just kind of prefer orange because... I always associate that kind of orange colour with beamers. You've got wireless charging for your phone under the ashtray lid there. There is CarPlay and Android Auto that operates wirelessly as well. And yeah, it's just an absolute savage place to be behind the wheel of. And getting behind the wheel of the i4, it doesn't disappoint then either. Because if you've ever truly enjoyed any sort of a performance BMW, and I know you, some people won't, count this car as one but just in terms of brake horsepower straight out performance this is a quick car and so what i mean is all of those characteristics the steering is a little bit light but if you floor it it's proper back of your seat stuff and in lots of ways petrol bmws haven't been made with this level of performance in quite a few years even taking the 330i you know it's a four cylinder it hasn't got as much brake horsepower as this. And very quickly, you'd kind of be a bit mad to say, no, I'll, I'll, buy, the, I'll buy the petrol 330i over the i4 because I'm a petrol head. But you'll enjoy this car just as much, genuinely. Now, it mightn't have the same kind of engine notes and all that stuff. I totally, totally get all that. I really do. But even the weight of the batteries included, it still handles well. Hasn't quite got that 50-50 balance. I think they've done their best to achieve it anyway. And as I said in my initial review of the car, and I only drove it for about half an hour that day, I've lived with it for a week now. I was just most impressed that they had made it look, feel and drive like a BMW. And to me, that was crucial in one of their first proper, I mean, I know they've had the, the i3 and the i8 and stuff like that, but this is kind of, let's take one of our really successful type model cars and just stick batteries in it. And, but, let's, but let's make it good. And I think they've achieved that. In terms of charging, you'll obviously do it in 12 hours with a wall box at home. This has got an 11 kilowatt charger on board, which means if you're using on-street chargers, you'll get a bit of a quicker burst out of them. And people have asked me, yeah, but is it still good in twisties and stuff like that? It is. Yes, there are, are points when you're really going into a corner and the weight of the battery sort of lets itself be known. But the lighter steering actually kind of works because it, it's such a kind of a point and squirt style performance output that you kind of want that lighter steering to go with it, I think, anyway. And there are some kind of strange weird engine style noises that you can turn on if you like. You can still do lots of tweaking with it in terms of individual modes as well. Uh, it's not too hard. It's kind of like Goldilocks. It's just right. And I probably feel like I'm being, uh, you know, not particularly critical of, of the car. Yeah, okay, it's, it's 75 grand if you spec one up. It is getting closer then to the M50, but then if you want to spec an M50, you're going to be into the six figures if you want to put a bit of a few toys onto it, shall we say. This really is just out of the box, perfect as it is. And like I said, I've been that petrol nut. I've had the V8 BMW in my life. I wouldn't want to be filling it up in today's, in today's world. And uh, yeah, this doesn't sound as good, but do you know what? I would, I would buy one of these in the morning. Energy consumption, I don't really see it dipping below 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers at any point. I think there was one day where I saw it at 16, but generally it's living in the low 20s. And yeah, if I was really nitpicking, I'd love a little bit less wind noise to be coming into the car over the A pillar. When you're driving at motorway speeds, you can kind of hear a bit too much of the wind going by. But that could also be because there's no engine noise might be a combination of the two someone asked me during the week look on a company car has an allowance of a certain amount and i said if you can stretch this and if you can get one i was like just and this this guy is a 
car enthusiasts. And I'd, again, I'd have no hesitation uh, recommending this. If you are that way inclined, you do like your cars, you do like driving. Um, it looks great, it's really, really, really quick. And the interior is, it's one of the best electric car interiors I've sat in so far anyway. So it is a yes from me for the i4, that's for sure. So as you can gather, I like it, I like it a lot. It feels like a BMW, drives like a BMW, take away the kind of lighter steering on it and you really wouldn't know, apart from the fact that it hasn't got a glorious sounding uh, straight six engine going on. But if you're a Beamer fan or you're thinking about getting into one because there's not a huge amount of saloons on an electric list right now, just go ahead and order it. Although you might be waiting a while. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.